Hello everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood French Canadian. I hope you're having a great day. So today we're going to go over this really cool holy and lightning build I made. This build will be super versatile because you're gonna do a lot of long range damage with the lightning incantations. You're gonna be able to tank a lot of damage as well. And when you find yourself in situations where you're surrounded by enemies, you'll be able to survive a really big fight because of the tankiness nature of this build as well. And the best part about all of this is you can get most of the things you're gonna need between level 25 to 35. It really depends on how comfortable you are at fighting Margit because you're gonna need to get something in Stormville Castle, but everything else you can get before that. So for the classes, I would either choose Confessor or Prophet. And the thing is, you could choose Vagabond. It starts with like eight or nine Fates, so you're gonna have to put a lot of points into Fate to be able to use the incantations. But I guess if your vigor and endurance is already pretty high, then fate is all you need to level up. So maybe it can work, you can make it work, because Vagabond will actually make it easier for you to start with, because you'll be more tanky to start with. So the first thing you're gonna wanna get, and you can do this as soon as you leave the starter area, you're going to want to pick up the Ash of War called Sacred Blade. Now the awesome thing about this Ash of War is not only can you add the Sacred Affinity to your weapon, which will deal holy damage, which is boosted by putting points into faith, it sends a arc of light towards your enemies, and it also boosts your sword. So not only do you already have the Sacred Damage from the Affinity, you're also gonna have an added buff because of this Ash of War. So the way you get it, let's say you're in the starter area, the first step, you just enter the game with your new character. I know you're not gonna have like this whole section of the map open, but you want to get the map for this first part, then you're gonna take the road on the left and you're gonna follow it all the way to the bottom here to the third Church of America. You'll also be able to get the map for this section uh, in this area, I'm not sure where it was. Once you get to the Church of America, you're gonna make your way uh, like here-ish. So go exactly north across this uh, little pond here. And go left and you should hear the sc uh, scarab already. It's right here. So there you go. So you have your starting Ash of War. Now the great thing about coming to this church is that you will find the first flask of wondrous physic right here. Right from the get-go you'll have an extra flask to heal yourself with. So once you have Sacred Blade you want to go to Round Table Hold or any grace point. You're gonna put the Ash of War on your weapon and you're gonna select Sacred. Sacred uh, scales with faith and it does holy damage. So that's where most of your damage is gonna come from because for this build personally I won't pump up a lot of points into strength. So all the damage is really going to come from the holy damage, scaling with faith, and from me leveling up the weapon. So now that you have that buff and that Ash of War and you can start dealing holy damage, you're going to need a better shield and a better sword. The easiest way to get better shields is for merchants or for farming enemies that has a shield you want. Now the place you can go to is right here, Gatefront, which is, you know, exactly north of the starting area. It's the first sort of runes you come across as you start the game. These guys will drop the brass shield that I'm using. You don't need to use this, but I like it because it blocks 100 physical damage. So the guys that drop this stuff are just basically the guys that have it equipped. So these two here, and then there's one by the fire and one beside the night guy. And you can also farm that night guy for his armor if you want it. I just bought the armor that you can get at Round Table Hold from the Twin Husk Maidens. I'm also going to show you where you can buy really good shields from merchants. So there's two kite shields you can get. You can buy from merchants pretty early on. The first one is right here. Uh, it's between these woods and um, Fort Height. So he's right here. You can just like follow this road and eventually you'll see a sign and you'll be able to head left towards him. But I'll show you. To be careful around this area, there's a lot of bears. Oh hey, 
Ukraine and Ash of War. Nice. So if you're following that road, you're gonna see this glowing sign. And you wanna make your way through here and you'll be right there. So here's the kite shield, it has 100 physical damage, so it's a pretty good starting shield. The rest of the things we need are going to be in the Lyurnia area. Now you can go fight Margit if you want this way. However, I highly suggest bypassing it, bypassing the road to the right of the castle so you can get to Lyurnia of the Lakes right away. And I'll show you where to go, because it's pretty confusing. So you're gonna want to make your way up here to Stormhill Shack. And then instead of going into the castle to the left, you're going to continue on this road here, go all around, and then you'll be able to take this side of grace. From Stormhill Shack, you want to continue forward, and instead of taking a left where the road wants to take you, you're going to go forward under that archway. As you come up here, there will be a road. Just take that. You can go here and you hit the little lady. Because why not? I didn't even hit her. <laughs> right, you're gonna make your way to the left. It looks like there's no path, but there is. <laughs> If you have a lantern, equip it, because it's pretty dark. It's a pretty long trek and uh, this area is frame droppy <laughs> because of all the wind and the trees and stuff. And there is the grace point you'll need. So once you get here, you want to get the map for this area. It'll make this a hundred times easier. I believe it's in this swamp area around somewhere around here. So what we're going to get is we're going to go fight this knight. Now I fought him at level 24. It's easily done with a sword and shield and the sacred blade you have on your weapon. He's going to be right up here. You're going to be patrolling like around this area. And you can get this side of grace. So if something happens, if you die, you won't have to make your way all the way back here just to go get him again. So as you can see that's where the waypoint is. You can like make your way through here pretty easily. It's a straight shot all the way. So I'm coming from the grace point right here at the top that I showed you and we're gonna find him right here down the road. He's gonna be patrolling here. So he's gonna drop a, a dragon cult prayer book. Now with this prayer book you take it back to the guy at the round table hole, the prophet, I forget his name. And you'll be able to buy Honed Bolt and Lightning Spear, which is the two spells that you can use early on. So this guy is a little tricky to fight because obviously we're under leveled for this area. So you have to be really careful. Make sure you use your shield a lot. Now when he does that, you want to roll late because what's actually going to hit you is that Lightning Bolt. So if you roll to avoid the hit, the Lightning Bolt is 100% going to hit you. So he dropped the armor, I got lucky as hell, <laughs> but yeah, you can farm him for his armor. It's cool because it's gold, you know, so it matches the whole Holy Lightning Paladin build that we're going for. Now for you, if you defeat him the first time, he is going to drop the, um, the prayer book. So once you get to round table hold, you're going to want to talk to this dude, you're going to give him the prayer book, and you're going to be able to buy these spells. Lightning Spear, Honed Bolt, Electrify Armament. Now we won't need this for this build. But these two are really going to be the bread and butter of this build. So Lightning Spear only takes 17 faith, Honed Bolt takes 24. So let's look at the stats and what you'll need to do for this build. Your primary attributes will be faith and vigor. 
Mind will be as important as vigor, especially in the beginning. And then strength and endurance will be your secondary skills that you need. Strength is really going to be only for the shield. So the shield needs 16 strength because that's what I'm using. You want to go for a medium shield. Uh, if you want to go for a bigger shield, like a great shield, you're going to need more strength. And it's fine if you want to do that. You'll just have to spend more points into strength. But you really want to prioritize faith first, then vigor, then mind. Now, I know shield builds usually take a lot of endurance because when you block hit, it takes your endurance. If you're kiting around the enemy with your shield up, your endurance meter will not feel as quickly as when you're not holding it up. And now I know this build is going to take a lot of points, like you need faith and strength and endurance and mind and vigor. But you really want to prioritize holy damage, so when you do have to fight one-on-one, -on -one, you'll get a lot out of that sacred blade buff. But you want to do most of your damage with the lightning. So as for the talismans, right now there's not a lot we can do, <laughs> there's only two slots we have but you're just at one when you start the game. I actually started the game with the Crimson Amber Medallion, so you can choose that as your keepsake when you're creating your character. And I think this was going to work well for this build because it raises your maximum HP, which is going to be really important for you to be super tanky. So the second talisman you're going to want to get if you have that second pouch is the Curved Sword Talisman. It enhances guard counters, and we're going to use a lot of those with this build. Now you find that one in Stormville Castle. And I'll show you right now. Once you go to Stormville Castle, you want to go to the left and enter by the cliffside, not by the main gate. So that's what I did. Make your way in here, there will be two enemies at the bottom. Ow, right in my face, that's... It's not nice. Make your way through this garbage, be careful not to fall down. <laughs> so the talisman will be in this room right here. Uh, there is a, a banished knight, I believe they're called. You're gonna have to fight him to get it. Ah, lock on! Ow. Oh no, I missed the critical, damn it. There we go. These dudes are slow, it's always the same with the big knights and souls games. Ridiculous. Sometimes he'll drop his armor, so if you like that armor, it's pretty cool. Also drops his shield, it's not as good as the uh, brass shield though, unfortunately. So, where is that freaking box dude? Oh, it's right here. The talisman will be right here. So that's how you start this build early game. I think you guys are going to have a lot of fun with this. I can't wait to see what I can do with this build and game. And how versatile it is makes it so great because you can choose to be more tanky, less faithy. You can choose to be more faithy and less tanky. So it's really up to you. So I hope this helped you get started on your old paladin. And I hope you have yourself a wonderful day. And I'll see you all very soon.